When did you start making your own comics? Mm, I tried a lot when I was little, but I was very frustrated because reading comics is so easy and making them is so difficult. And, um, you know, it takes so little time to read them, and it just takes so long to make them. Um, so I would get uh, frustrated pretty quick. And comics are pretty hard to draw if you don't know how to draw at all. <laughs> 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 you have to draw everything all at once. You know, if you're just making one drawing, you can kind of fake it, and you're like, all right, well, there's this guy, and there's this car, and, like, those are some things I know how to draw, and you don't have to draw, like, the inside of a house and a microphone and, like, a wagon wheel. You can just draw a couple things, and that's good. But with comics, you have to draw everything, 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 and, like... Over and over yeah, and over again. Yeah, it was really shocking to me, like, how much... I could see right away, like, how much I was going to have to learn or how much I was going to have to work on it in order to do it. When I was younger, I had, you know, high-minded ambitions of working at Image Comics or something like that. And uh, <laughs> I just, uh, I don't know, I, I wanted, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I had these weird ideas that were more about drawing than they were about comics. Yeah. Like, I, I really wanted to be an inker for some reason. I didn't want to actually draw them, I, I just wanted to deal with ink. You just wanted to be a part of the process. I just liked that material or something. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like later I got into graffiti for the same reason, just like, I just like spray paint. And um, I thought that was a really weird idea, and then when I started finding out about painters like Frank Stella or something, who were just like, these paintings are just about paint. And I was like, yeah, this is like the same thing. Just like industrial or something. Is I don't know, when I was younger, I was really interested in materials. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I was I was interested in things that seemed to be conflicting. Like I was I liked even as a teenager I really liked minimal art even though I wasn't sure like what it was or something. You say minimal art? Time, yeah. And at the same time I liked um I don't know, like Egon Sheila or something. Like something that's really like fruity and uh you know, loaded with emotional content and, like, a lot of, like, fine line quality and stuff like that. So those are sort of extremes, like, opposite end of the spectrum extremes that I was really interested in. So did you go to art school? Uh, yeah. I went to school in Boston. Uh, that was pretty miserable. <laughs> but I met, I met uh, Ben Jones there, so that was a good aspect to it. And this other great cartoonist Keith Waters that's pretty uh, inactive as far as drawing goes, generally speaking. But when he does do stuff, it's really good. So I met both of those guys there. That was that made it almost worth it. <laughs> now, you and you and Ben were, I think I read somewhere you guys were involved in a newspaper together, pre-pre. Yeah, paper we radio. started a Xerox magazine called Paper Radio that um, came out every week. Like, I met him, and he was kind of the first dude that I met at school that um, I felt like I understood or I was interested in or something. I felt like we had something that, um, something that had to happen between us or something. Mm-hmm. But I suggested to him that we do a, a zine every week um, that we would give up for free that would just be comics and drawings or whatever, and... Um, Anybody could submit to it. But, I mean, you know, mostly our group of friends or whatever. And uh, so we started doing that every week, and that was called Paper Radio. And when we met the dudes at Fort Thunder, we would always give them Paper Radio, and then they decided to do a monthly newspaper, or what they were attempting to make a <laughs> monthly newspaper. <laughs> and um, they called me one day and were like... Uh, we're going to call our newspaper Paper Rodeo. You have one week to tell us if you don't like that. And so I never told them anything. So it just became Paper Rodeo. Originally, it wasn't going to have any title at all, their newspaper. But then they were trying to get advertisers for it. Nobody believed that it existed, you know. Because they'd be like, hey, we want ads for this paper. And they'd be like, what's it called? And they'd be like, it doesn't have a name. And they'd just be like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> they 
these funny little art students coming in out of nowhere with this random labelless paper. I can see yeah. that not really uh, succeeding. Yeah. Was working with Ben kind of helping, helped you develop your own kind of, I guess, kind of interest in the actual cartooning process itself? I mean, I was always trying to make comics. Mm -hmm. It was just really hard, so I felt like I wasn't really getting it done. <laughs> Uh, and I was always trying to find the weirdest thing I could, and then I got, I finally got that, uh, that Hutch Owens Working Hard comic. Actually, no, I found out about Chester Brown from Wizard Magazine. <laughs> um, That's awesome. Yeah, so I got a Chester Brown comic, then I got the Drawn and Quarterly catalog, and in the Drawn and Quarterly catalog, there was a Tom Hart comic, Hutch Owens Working Hard, and then in the back of that, there was an ad for Spit and a Half. And so I got King Cat, and then I got the Spit and a Half catalog. So I just went, like, lower and lower and lower. <laughs> <laughs> the, the most, like, sub-underground, scummy crap. Um, and and I feel like nowadays I always see, like, horrible zines that are made with, like, ballpoint pen and stuff. But at that time, it was like nobody really did that. So I was really excited to get my hands on anything like that that anybody had done. It was just, like, totally, just, like, loose grip. So, um, yeah, I don't know. So I found out about all that stuff. So by the time I was going to college, I was trying to make, like, weird, weird comics, you know, which is basically is just contrived to try to make superhero comics. And, um, I didn't really have a style going. I just, like, it was just very confusing because there were so many things that I liked and they didn't really seem to go together and I didn't know how to make them work together because I liked you know I liked like Batman Year One and I liked some manga and I liked uh, I don't know I, I love Chester Brown and I don't know I just liked so many different things and I didn't really know if it was possible to make the kind of stuff that I wanted to make yeah um, and then I saw all the Fourth Thunder guy stuff and that sort of made it seem like anything I wanted to do would be possible because they were making weird comics but they're also sort of like superhero comics and they're real lousy too you know in certain ways like <laughs> Chip and Nail's early stuff where he's just he just has a pen and like a notebook and that's just kind of it and I was like mm -hmm. oh wow you don't even need to use like dip pens or anything like you can just I don't know I can just do whatever I want so after that realization in my mind, I feel like it still took me a couple of years to, like, really let go and just um, just kind of, like, give up or something. And I feel like when that happened, that's when I sort of started to learn how to really do things more like what I'm doing now. Like, I had to give up first before I could um, move forward. <laughs> 